In this video, we'll be looking at one more convergence test called the divergence test, as well as a few notes about working with infinite series. So let's consider the infinite series, the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of a sub n. Then the divergence test says that if the limit as n goes to infinity of a sub n is not zero or does not exist, then the sum from n equals one to infinity of a sub n diverges. Okay, so it's important to note that this is a test that in which we can only conclude divergence. It doesn't tell us anything about when our series might converge. Okay, so here's just two um, notes about this particular test. This divergence test does imply the following. Okay, it implies that if the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of a sub n converges, then the terms the limit as n goes to infinity of a sub n must be going to zero. Okay, but here's what it doesn't say. So here's our, our warning, which I think I should put in big red letters. So here's our warning. If the limit as n goes to infinity of a sub n is zero, this actually doesn't tell us anything about convergence or divergence the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of a sub n may converge or diverge. Okay, so what the divergence test is telling us is that we can look at the terms themselves. If the terms themselves are not getting smaller and smaller, if they're not going to zero, then the sum of those different terms must diverge. But if the terms themselves do go to zero, we don't know anything. This test doesn't tell us anything about convergence or divergence. Um, separately, if you know you already have a convergence series, then it must be that those terms go to zero. Okay, it's just that this implication, this if-then statement about if the sum converges, then the terms go to zero, can't be flipped. Knowing that the terms go to zero doesn't tell you anything about convergence or divergence. So let's just look at a quick example of why. Well, you can have things like the following here. Okay, um, the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over 2 to the n, okay, is a series that converges, okay, and the limit as n goes to infinity of 1 over 2 to the n does go to 0, okay. Knowing that this goes to 0 doesn't tell us it converges, we'd have to use the geometric series test in this case, okay. But you can also have things like the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over n, okay? Well, it's true that the limit as n goes to infinity of 1 over n is 0, but this series diverges. We haven't looked at this series specifically yet, where it will see why this diverges um, within our next section, but there is a connection between this sum from n equals 1 to infinity and the integral from 1 to infinity of 1 over x dx which we showed back with our improper integrals, is an integral that diverges. Okay, so just sort of note that that's connected or related to the integral from 1 to infinity of 1 over x. Okay, just to give you something that we have seen that um, was a divergent integral, okay? This sum turns out to be divergent as well. So I have two examples here, both of which have terms that go to zero, one that converges, one that diverges. So just knowing the terms go to zero doesn't tell us anything. It's if the terms don't go to zero that we know that our series definitely diverges. Okay, so let's look at just a couple of examples of applying this divergence test. So here I have the sum from n equals one to infinity of arctangent of n. So to see if I can use this test, 
I'll take the limit as n goes to infinity of arc tan n. Okay. And as we learn lots of different um, series convergence tests, um, this test is a good one to try first, because if you are able to determine that the terms of your series are non-zero, or are, excuse me, are, are going to something that's not zero, um, then you know it diverges and you don't have to do any more work. Okay, we'll just see that in many cases the terms do go to zero and we need to do additional convergence tests to determine um, whether our series is converging or diverging. So here I'm going to look at taking the limit of those terms. We'll remember that our arctan function looks like this and has horizontal asymptotes at negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. So the limit as n goes to infinity of arctangent of n is pi over 2, which is definitely not 0. Okay, And when I'm going to use the divergence test, I need to specifically note that the limit value that I got is not equal to 0, and then conclude so this series diverges by the divergence test. So just another reminder, it's called the divergence test, not a convergence test. We can never conclude that something converges by the divergence test. The divergence test only allows us to conclude something about divergence. So here's one more example. I have the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of log of 3n cubed plus n over n cubed plus 4. So I want to try to take the limit as n goes to infinity of log of 3n cubed plus n over n cubed plus 4. Okay. Um, so notice that the properties that we'll use for taking the limit of these terms um, is like what we were doing in section 11.1 .1 for limits of sequences. I have here a, a composition of functions. So this is going to be equal to log of the limit as n goes to infinity of 3n cubed plus n all over n cubed plus 4. Okay, I notice that I have the same highest power of n in the numerator and denominator. So my limit will be just the coefficients of those um, highest powers. So my limit as n goes to infinity of 3n cubed plus n over n cubed plus 4 will be 3 over 1. Okay, so we see that limit is log 3. Well, that's also definitely not equal to 0. I'm just underlining that because that's an important part of our work. So we can say, so the series diverges by the divergence test. And in these series problems, we always have to have work to check the conditions of the test. Um, we have to have our concluding statements about whether the series converges or diverges, and we have to have the name of the test that we're using. Okay, So the divergence test is very nice to apply when it works. If we'd found that our limit was zero, that would tell us we have to try something else. Okay, just a couple more notes here about combining infinite series and working with um, various series. If we have um, two convergent series, meaning both series are known to converge to some finite number, then we can do the following kinds of manipulations. If I have a sum of a constant times my terms a n, I can pull that constant out of the sum. Um, and then this one's particularly nice. Again, this is specifically for convergent sequences. This says the sum of um, a difference or sum of terms here is equal to the sum of that first set of terms plus or minus the sum of the second set of terms. Okay. One other thing to note that um, is about how a finite number of terms does not affect convergence or divergence. So this is talking about um, what happens if I change that, that starting index? Is that going to affect anything? So let's say I have um, the sum from n equals 5 to infinity of a n and the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of a n. Okay, These will either both converge or both diverge. Okay, So the starting index is not so important. The starting index going from 1 to infinity or 5 to infinity, the only difference between these two things is that this um, n equals 5 to infinity is missing the a1, the a2, the a3, and the a4 terms, but that's just a finite number of terms. So um, if what's happening with this, this 
sum off to infinity is diverging, adding a couple more terms isn't going to change the divergence. If this sum is um, converging, adding finite more terms, finite number of terms um, would still be converging. Okay, so this, this starting index here doesn't affect our convergence or divergence. Let me know if you have any questions on this material so far.